<laughs> hey everyone, Tyson the Subaru Specialist from Subaru Prince George here. Today we are taking a look at the 2024 Subaru Forester Touring in the Horizon Blue Pearl. Now Touring is our mid-level trim. It's above the entry-level 2.5i Forester, but it's below a Sport, a Limited, and a Wilderness. Powered by a 2.5 liter four-cylinder boxer engine, you get 182 horsepower, plenty of pep in a vehicle of this size, you get great economy. This has the same front end as the 22s. Very aggressive, boxy looking, keeps that SUV front end styling, which the Forester's known for. We've got these new fog light bezels. A little bit different. Smaller, more angular LED steering responsive headlights. They're bright as heck. Got, yeah, they, they turn, which is nice. Keeps everything in view. You can see around the corner. You do get these 17 inch snowflake wheels with these. I see a snowflake. I can't unsee it after someone told me they're called the snowflake wheels. You've got that cladding around the wheel wells, extends along the bottom, and that's in areas that typically get beat up by rocks. So Subaru's done something smart. Whether you like it or not, it is functional. It's practical. It does make sense to protect your vehicle. You do have 8.7 inches of minimum ground clearance on the Forester. Roof rails are standard. And it's nice that you get the tie down points integrated into the roof rails, both front and rear. So if you get the crossbars, you're attaching something, it's a lot better. You tie it in there as opposed to here where it could slide much better than tying it to the crossbars themselves as well. Fuel door, rear passenger side. Now it's tied to the driver door. So driver door is unlocked. This is unlocked. If I lock the driver door, a little pin will shoot out of here. So click lock. See the pin shoots out and it would lock into that hole there. And this is running regular, unleaded, unleaded 87. You don't have to run premium or mid-grade in this. You're totally fine. So if it's locked, doesn't open. Unlocked, it opens, which is very, very nice. Close that. So at the rear, get this new spoiler painted in black. That's a change for 24, the fact that it's not body color. The shark fin antenna is also painted gloss black. We've got backup sensors in the rear bumper, and they'll apply the brakes for things you're going to hit something between speeds of 1 and 15 kilometers an hour in reverse. Terrifying when it works. Works really well, though. This has a 2-inch receiver with the 4-pin wiring installed. Comes with the cap, which actually stays in there surprisingly well. But, yeah, 2-inch receiver. Whether it's for towing or a bike rack, the regular Foresters will tow a absolute max of 1,500 pounds. Wilderness is different. Now, power lift gate, I can activate from the key fob, the driver's seat, the door. I've got options. You have options. And with that big boxy square rear end that you have in the Forester, you get a ton of storage, tall, wide, and deep storage. Cargo tray is standard equipment. There is a little bit of a lip to help contain any spills, anything like that. Privacy cover is also standard equipment. And it's easy to use. Pull hides everything from the top of the seats down. Now, you'll notice this piece back here is adjustable, and it's just a pressure fit. And the reason that this is adjustable is these seats can recline. So if this, if this bar here was all the way here, you couldn't recline those seats. So it's a function thing. If I was covered, you've got grocery bag hooks on either side. Hook the loop of your grocery bag over that. Take corners, your groceries don't go tumbling to the other side. 12 volt power point for any charging needs. You've got nice hard mount physical tie downs, one in each corner. Makes securing awkward cargo easy. Underneath the cargo tray, false floor. You've got a place to put the cargo cover, the tonneau cover. It tucks in there, which is nice because that's just a telescopic piece. Lots of storage underneath here. And then underneath this tray, we have our spare tire, our jack, our eye bolt, all the tools we need to change a tire in the event you need those. We've got a couple of grocery bag hooks here, although I probably wouldn't use them myself while driving. If I was camping somewhere or at a wedding or something, I may hang some things off there, but I wouldn't do it while driving because it'd be hanging directly in my rear vision. Hook out of there. I had someone tell me or comment on a previous video, they'd hang a Bluetooth speaker there while they were out in mean, picnic or something like that. And that, I think that's probably the most clever answer that I've received as to what that's for. And I like that. 
Now, to close it, I can close it from the key fob, I can close it from the driver door, I can pull down, I can close and lock, I can close. So what this is, it locks everything, closes, I'll get an audible and a visual cue. And the idea is, if I do that, I don't have to fish this out of my pocket, out of my purse, I don't have to walk back up to the front to lock the doors. It's quite handy. Second row. There's a lot of room. You've got tons of headroom, tons of legroom. In the Touring, it's the black cloth with the leather bolstering, or gray, depending what you want to call it. The headroom is phenomenal in this. You can fit up to three people comfortably across. There's a fold-down armrest with integrated cup holders. There's only one or two passengers. Out of the center console, we have vents. We have two USB ports. Vents you can close, but you've got vents out of there in addition to underneath each front seat facing rearward. So the second row does heat up and cool down very effectively. You've got three map back pockets on the backs of both front seats. So storage is not an issue. Very, very convenient. Easy access to the latch system. Lower anchors and tethers for children. Safety first. Got this gray step and it's textured and grippy. And the reason that it's that is that's designed to be used as a step if you put something on the crossbars. That is much better to step on than on the tire. And the reason I say that is the tire sits inside the fender and you're not going to get as much of your foot on the tire as you would on that. Rear door card, soft touch cloth, leather et for the armrest, power window switch, a little bit of storage with a bottle holder. Down here, we have this little silver bar and that locks in there. It's an extra side impact crash safety bar Subaru's installed and it's designed to stop intrusion into the passenger cab in the event of a side collision. So safety first again. It's bottle holder, has a little icon, don't put cups there is what it's saying. And if you need it, we do have child lock. Now these two doors are not tied together, they're separate. So if you need to do both, you do actually have to go to the passenger side there and lock that as well. With it being a proximity key, key never needs to come under your purse pocket, needs to be within 46 inches. To lock it, I touch the lines. There we go. And it beeped multiple times because as you can see, I didn't close this door fully. To unlock it, hand in the handle. Again, key within 46 inches. Up front, driver door card looks very similar to that of the rear with the soft touch, the soft touch. Front two windows are auto power windows, regular power windows for the rear. Window lock, got your power mirror adjustment. A little bit more storage along with your bottle holder. Power driver seat, including lumbar support. This is the first trim level where you get the power driver seat. And it's the same seating material up front as it is in the second row. And you do get quite a bit of headroom and more than adequate legroom, even for taller people. These headrests are adjustable depending how close to the top back of your head you like your headrest. Panoramic sunroof here. And we do have some buttons down here by the driver's left knee. So we can open and close the rear hatch. We can turn off those steering responsive headlights, the headlights that swivel. We can set it so the memory tailgate doesn't open all the way. So if you park in a low parking garage, it's handy for that. You don't want it opening into the roof of your garage, damaging your hatch. Scroll wheel for the brightness of your gauges. We can turn off the auto start stop and you can turn off the blind spot detection and cross traffic alert. I'll show you what the blind spot detection looks like inside in a second here. It's push button start. My key or my foot is on the brake. Keys in my pocket, light goes green. Foot's not on the brake, light does not go green. Blind spot detection indicates, pops up like that. Let's you know if someone's in your blind spot on the corresponding side, which is quite nice. It doesn't, it doesn't replace shoulder checking, but visibility in this Forester is phenomenal, if you ask me. Always has been in the Foresters. So if you guys are in the market for a Subaru, you're in British Columbia, or you're close to BC, living in Alberta, somewhere like that, and you're interested in one, please reach out to me directly. I'd love to help you guys find the perfect Subaru. I've had quite a few people come in and said, hey, they've watched my videos and it's been beneficial. So please, if you're watching this looking for a Subaru, please reach out. You can find my contact info in the About tab on my channel. Steering wheel itself. I get a lot of comments, people saying it's small and it's car sized it lends itself to turning very, very quickly. Left-hand side, we have our Bluetooth and audio controls. 
You can accept phone calls. You can issue voice commands. You can hang up or decline calls. Source switches from AM to FM to satellite to USB, etc. No CD player in the 24s, unfortunately. Info, we'll change our small info display, which we'll check out there in a minute. Our volume toggle. Switch between presets. Go to the next song on your playlist. That's what those arrows are for. These arrows down here will change our small little display. Right now you can see it's estimated distance empty and, that, and we're getting terrible economy because we're sitting here. So trip A, trip B, how long it's been running versus how far you've traveled, digital speedometer, how many milliliters of fuel it saved versus how many, long it shut off at intersections. You can change some settings and then you're back to the fuel economy. I find most people like the digital speedometer. I'm one of those people myself. Right hand side, we have our adaptive cruise and our lane centering. Now, both of those use these two black boxes, these color stereo eyesight cameras to look for vehicles, pedestrians, cyclists, and road lines. These also do automatic emergency braking and lane sway. But when I turn on the adaptive cruise, you get an image of the Forester and you'll notice there's two bars ahead of it. Now there's four. That is the follow distance behind the vehicle ahead of you that you'll follow at if you catch up while using cruise. Four bars, 100 kilometers an hour, roughly 150 to 180 feet behind the vehicle ahead of you. Great, fantastic feature for highway driving. I didn't think I would like it. I love it. I don't have it in my current Outback. I've got an older Outback. I demonstrate this all the time. I miss it. I get mad when I catch up to people using cruise now. Lane centering here is designed to work above 60 kilometers an hour. I've turned it on. You'll notice those lines are gray. If the cameras can see the road lines, whichever side that is, whether it's one or both, will illuminate white. And then if you start getting close to the road line, it'll actually give you gentle steering input to keep you in the center of your lane. It's a great assist. You're way less fatigued at the second half of a long day of driving. You're way less fatigued at the end of a trip. It's great. Turn that off. I don't recommend people have it on around town just because, especially where we are, the road lines, not that great. Sport and intelligent drive modes. Intelligence, what it defaults to for every day. Sport, you go faster sooner. More spirited driving. Heated steering wheel, best thing ever. Don't need it today. It's pretty warm out, but it heats up relatively quickly and it gets your hands nice and toasty. Steering wheel adjustment, bottom left of the steering column. Pull down, it's tilt and telescopic. So depending how you like to sit, how, how outstretched you like your arms, it's a great feature. I'm a big fan of it. And you just pull back up on that to put it back to lock it. We do have paddles, downshift and um, upshift, so we can manually select our gears in the automatic CVT. Great if you're going down hills. I use it all the time in mine. This little info screen, you cycle through with the info button on the left-hand side of the steering wheel. And it gives you a different piece of information on each screen, gauges, fuel economy, what you're listening to, date and time, change some settings. You can see what safety tech's active. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. It's also our climate control displays, and it is dual zone, and it ranges from 15 on the low side all the way up to 30, 29 and a half, 30. Freezing to tropical, it's easy to sync it back to just driver controlled. You can see the fan strength. You can see where your airflow is being directed, and you will always have your outside thermometer on the top right, and you'll always have your clock. So it's easy. It's just a quick glance down from the road at it, not having to look all the way down and focus. It's, it is nice to have it there. Below that, we have Subaru's 8-inch infotainment screen. It's really easy to use touchscreen. Under apps, we have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, wired connections, of course, in the Forester, access to the My Subaru app after the vehicle's registered in your name, radio, media, put it in reverse, backup camera pops up, rear assist braking's on, parking sensors are on. It does show you the top of the bumper there, so you have something to relate to. And those orange lines move and show you where you're going to end up if you keep your wheel turned that way. Now, you can clean the backup camera from inside the vehicle. This just got cleaned. I'm not going to do that and have washer fluid all over the back of it. But you take this end of the wiper stock and you twist and hold this end towards yourself. So you rotate it towards yourself and it'll clean the back window and put it down there. Now, we do have physical buttons in addition to it being a touch screen, which is nice. Home, home, physical volume knob, tuning knob. Below that, four-way flashers, driver's side temperature. Passenger side temperature, fan strength, mode change where the airflow is coming from. Sync just means that both sides are synced to the same. As soon as I adjust the passenger side, the light goes out and you can see I'm at two separate temperatures here. Press sync, goes back to just driver controlled. Heated side mirrors, back window and windshield wiper de-icers. So where your wipers sit on the windshield, those are also heated. 
great thing. You go through far less wiper blades in the winter with that. Two USBs and auxiliary and a 12 volt, along with rubberized device storage. Automatic CVT. There's manual mode. You can see I'm in first gear. Bottom left there, it says first. Now it says second. I just tap this paddle to go up. I'm going to tap this left one to go down. There we go. It's not going to let me start in sixth. So you are kind of limited by the speed you're go going, but it's built in safeties. It is nice. Now we do have an electronic park brake. We've got auto vehicle hold, which is a park brake. Well, it's, which is a brake holder for construction drive through rush hour traffic. You can see the red P for park. You can see that AVH auto vehicle hold. Turn that off, back on. Now to turn this off, this park brake, if my foot's not on the brake and I push down, it doesn't go off. And it actually says to press the brake. Foot's on the brake and I push down, it goes off. So that's an important thing to remember. Heated seats, high and low for both the driver and the passenger. Really easy to use with the cloth. It heats up super quickly. And we have X mode. So X mode is like four low in a pickup. I have to be going under 20 kilometers an hour to engage it. I press that. I get the X mode screen, little rough terrain icon, downhill descent control. Automatically goes to the off-road mode screen there. Shows the pitch and tilt, which way my wheels are turned, what angle I'm sitting at. It is nice. It takes a very capable vehicle and makes it that much more capable. We can also turn off traction control by twisting it to the left. And there you go. It's off. Back on. I twisted to the right. Put it back on. Now, to turn off X mode, I can either push down or I can exceed 40 kilometers an hour. If I exceed 40 kilometers an hour, it shuts off automatically. So you can't wreck it. If you're driving down the road and someone pushes it or you reach for your coffee, accidentally push it, it's going to beep at you and say, hey, I can't do that. But nothing bad is going to happen. Deep cup holders, a little bit of storage, soft touch armrest. There is a 12 volt power point in there and there is a place to run cords out of while still having this close so you don't crush them. Up top, we have lane sway assist and automatic emergency braking. You can turn those off. Again, both these camera boxes use these systems. This will beep at you if you start crossing lines without signaling. That stops you from hitting things. Vehicles and pedestrians saves you 10% on your basic insurance here in BC. Sunroof control. So if I open it, it is going to drag the shade. It is a manual shade. You can have it open without the glass. I just have it closed to keep glare off of the screens and such. So that's one position. That's two position. And we do have that nice little kind of bug screen. Stops things from get, being sucked in here. Then to close it, just one touch. There we go. Pretty easy. Simple. It's nice. And I'll show you. Open. LED map lights, SOS, and roadside assistance. That's part of the three-year trial to the My Subaru Connected Services you get with most new Subarus. SOS is exactly that. Gets you emergency help. That gets you roadside. We do always have the roadside assistance number down here, and there is a roadside assistance card in your owner's manuals. We've got sunglass storage. We have card holders on both visors. We've got vanity mirrors with lights and you can fold that across and extend that keep the sun directly out of your eyes if it's at your left or your right which is quite handy and does happen quite a bit living up here depending which direction you're headed now let's take a look at the outside one more time i'm gonna leave it running i've got the headlights turned on the fog lights turned on i know i didn't show that to you guys initially but the touring is great value we don't get a lot of these horizon blue but it is a very nice color i don't think the camera is doing it justice see those headlights you can see those c cut channel daytime running lights fog lights or leds very very bright obviously you can't quite see exactly how bright they are during the day give you that full 360 walk around If you guys have any questions about any of the features or functions or technology you saw in this vehicle, please put it in the comments below. I'm always looking to answer your guys' questions. And if I don't have the answer for a question, I get to go searching for it and I get to learn something new myself, which is great, especially when it comes to Subaru. So thank you for watching my quick walkthrough of the 2024 Subaru Forester Touring in the Horizon Blue Pearl. I'm Tyson, the Subaru Specialist from Subaru Prince George. 
Thanks for watching. We'll talk soon.